In early 2018, the Nets gaming craze was finding a massive audience. Highlighted by its unique and innovative building mechanics and refreshing cartoon-like graphics, Fortnite Battle Royale had the perfect formula to spread across the world like contagion. Originally envisioned and developed by Epic Games, Fortnite wasn't even meant to be a battle royale game to begin with. Instead, it began as a PvE survival game called Fortnite Save the World. Save the World had been in development for over 5 years before Epic could no longer ignore the explosive popularity of the battle royale genre, seen in the massively popular PUBG and H1Z1 games. The BR mode itself was originally developed by only two developers in the team, before getting the green light from higher ups and developing a much larger squad. Within just weeks of its release, in the fall of 2017, Fortnite rapidly hooked its worldwide audience. And as with any other popular PvP game, the highest skilled players soon differentiated themselves from the pack, and fan bases soon began to form around those who were believed to be the best players in the world. Streamers like High Distortion, Mr. Grimms, TSM Myth, Ninja, and Tifu all saw their viewership numbers rise exponentially as their unbelievable clips started going viral. As these fan bases grew and continued to grow to Day, many began to speculate on which top streamer was actually the best, and legendary rivalries began to form as a result. The Early Rise Friday Fortnite was the first major competitive Fortnite event that truly began gaining traction. Ninja's dead! We won! Ninja's dead. We won! Hosted by Keemstar, the invite-only event allowed for the game's most highly skilled and beloved streamers to battle it out in public matches to race for the highest number of kills. These streams were star-studded and pulled hundreds of thousands of live viewers and millions of views after getting uploaded to YouTube. In many ways, some OG fans see this era as the true peak of competitive Fortnite, as it was the time that the most popular players like Ninja and Tifu were truly at the top of their game, with both players winning it all multiple times. Hey, don't you ever, ever disrespect the duo again! The streams resulted in legendary moments that defined this era of competitive Fortnite. But Friday Fortnite wasn't just about making the biggest streamers bigger, it was also about highlighting and finding new talent that no one knew about just yet. Enter Mongrel. This was the first stage in which many future competitive legends displayed their talent to a larger audience, with Secret underscore Mongrel being a prime example. At first, the new challenger actually was largely disliked by the general audience, being a faceless kid who knocked out many of the larger streamers in the event. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Someone needs to clip that! But little did the viewers know how impactful Mongrel would be in just a few months. While Friday Fortnite largely satisfied the casual audience's desire to watch competitive gameplay, a massive growing pool of players was itching to get their own chance to compete for money and fame. Teenagers and young adults with a burning desire and skill levels surpassing even Ninja, Tifu, and Myth. They would finally get their chance to shine on November 7, 2018, when Fortnite announced the 8-week, eight, $8 million competitive Fortnite event called Summer Skirmish. Although very minute in the grand scheme of competitive, this event completely shook up the competitive scene. Many large streamers who were seen at the top of the food chain were soon revealed to be competitive frauds, not being able to hang with seemingly unknown competitive players. It also slowly revealed the next generation of legendary pros, and players like Liquid Poach, Nate Hill, and Ghost Bizzle whose practice in scrim lobbies and competitive environments revealed to be the best preparation for the competitive scene. After the success of the Summer Skirmish, Epic Games continued hosting competitive events with increasingly larger prize pools. The image of money and fame brought millions of viewers and competitors to the scene. Then, in February 2019, the entire scene was hit with a bombshell. The Peak It's hard to honestly explain how strong of a grip Fortnite had on the world during its peak. By every meaning of the phrase, it had become a worldwide phenomenon. Fortnite dances took over schools, skins became Halloween costumes, and mainstream artists, actors, and even the news became consumed by Fortnite. This is why when Fortnite announced its largest in-person competitive event, the Fortnite World Cup, the world went crazy. The summer event offered millions of dollars in prize money, 
for the best 100 solos and 50 duos across the world. Simply qualifying for a spot immediately meant a guaranteed $50,000 and more depending on how well you fared in the tournament itself. For the qualifying weeks of the tournament, every competitive Fortnite player in the world tried their best to qualify for the coveted 200 solo and duo World Cup spots. Millions struggled to make any sort of progress as the world's best competitors tamped them down with ease. Many names like Dubs, Mega, and Klitz began to make their names in the NA scene, while Benji Fishy, Mondral, and Mr. Savage all claimed their qualification spots in the EU. Funnily enough, one pro even qualified by simply using a hamster ball and playing for competitive placement points, while in the background, the old guard like Ninja, Klutzy, and Myth narrowly missed out on qualifying. Tifu notably made it into the World Cup solos after winning first place in one week's qualifier. When qualifications were said and done, the World Cup weekend was chock full of the world's highest skilled Fortnite players. This event was guaranteed to be epic. The Downfall The honeymoon phase from the World Cup lasted for another year or so before a harsh reality began to set in. Competitive Fortnite was slowly dying. After quarantine wiped out the chance of another World Cup and LAN events, the community was forced to stay home and compete for online events and increasingly smaller prize pools. Online viewership of events began to decrease as rivalries began to fade into obscurity. The old guard also began to lose their edge as pros like NRG Zate, Liquid Chap, Ghost Bizzle, Tifu, and others could no longer claim world elite status. As these fan favorite players left the competitive scene, so did their fans. A violent snowball effect emerged as competitive viewership evaporated. Other games like Apex Legends and Warzone began taking a huge chunk out of the competitive Fortnite player base. The newest great players like Queezy and even Booga didn't have the personality of Mondral, Zayt, and others and thus couldn't polarize an audience well enough to grow true competitive viewership. For years, this downward trend continued, with the present moment being arguably the lowest point in Fortnite's competitive history. Streamers like Clicks and Asian Jeff still keep the scene alive, but the legendary moments created in the first years are now relics of the past. The history of competitive Fortnite is one with many ebbs and flows, but is a testament to the true character of the game, one of spontaneity, ruthless competition, and constant evolution. If you're a competitive gamer yourself, or someone who loves to track and show off your gaming stats, Potter has built the ultimate gamer profile for you to do so. Track hundreds of stats across your favorite games, including Fortnite, compete in global tournaments, or duel with your friends. If you check it out fast enough in the first link in the description, you can reserve your OG username before it gets taken. Peace out, and keep grinding gamers.